It's time for Comment, Please, by Univest. Marking 50 years of serving Montgomery and Bucks Counties. Cited by the Associated Press, Pennsylvania Association of Broadcasters, Society of Professional Journalists, and the Philadelphia Press Association for Excellence in Broadcasting. Here's the host of Comment, Please! by Univest, Daryl Berger. Good afternoon and welcome to Comment, Please! by Univest. On this uh, Wednesday afternoon, it is the fourth day of January 2012. I still have to think about that when I say it. Thanks a lot for tuning into the program today. A little bit later on during the program, we're going to have some open phones. We'll talk about some uh, things that have been going on in Montgomery County. A historic election resulted yesterday in the swearing-in of Two Democratic majority commissioners. History was made in Montgomery County. We'll talk about that. And last night in Iowa, it was uh, an interesting result to the Iowa caucuses. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about some other things as well a little bit later on in the program. During the first couple of segments, uh, we're going to be in conversation with Hal Sherliff, and he is uh, with the John Birch Society, going to be giving an address tonight uh, in Tomlinson Township at the Tomlinson Firehouse, and we'll, we'll tell you more about that in a little bit talking about something called Agenda 21. Whenever I hear the word agenda, I'm always a little bit nervous because I wonder whose agenda is it, and and if there is an agenda, uh, is it helping me or or is it something I ought to be concerned about? And Hal certainly believes this is something that I and everyone else ought to be concerned about. And Hal, first of all, thanks a lot for coming in. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me on. Now, this is, uh, before we get into the conversation specifically about what you're going to be talking about tonight and Agenda 21 and, and what this is all about, a couple of questions about the John Birch Society. Sure. Those people that have heard about the John Birch Society automatically think of sort of the, the anti-communist group. In, in, in a post-Soviet world, what is the, uh, it's the image now of the John Birch Society in, in your view? Well, th- when you're anti-communist, you're automatically pro something else, right? You're pro free market, limited government. Yeah. And that was really what we were about. And as we're doing this, we're anti-communist. So communism isn't something that's gone away. Right. It just isn't as uh, uh, odious. We don't have uh, Khrushchev banging his shoe. Uh, we have, might have something a little bit worse, though. Mm-hmm. We have this uh, as Agenda 21. But the John Birch Society has always supported limited government, sovereignty of our nation, and responsible responsibility. Right. And uh, we see a lot of big government going on. So the mission of a society... While that may have changed a little bit, the overall focus is still limited government under the Constitution. And, and, and Hal, I think, too, that some of, and, and what we're going to be talking about uh, sort of is, is connected to the United Nations. That's correct. And, and I think that most folks uh, don't have to think too much to realize that there is an agenda that the United Nations has, and, and sometimes it seems quite uh, in competition or in, in contrary uh, to the U.S. Constitution, and in some ways to to our very way of life. I, I mean, there seems to be, and it seems to be much more open. It doesn't seem like it's a secret agenda. Maybe how they want to implement it uh, might be secretive, and, and well, how thanks, we'll talk about that. Thanks to the uh, the Internet and the social media, the word can get out a whole lot faster. Yeah. You know, back in the 80s, 70s, and 60s, even the 90s, yeah, the technology was advancing. You had videos. Now you can put stuff on on YouTube and get thousands, if not millions, of people watching this material or putting all these documents that uh, we would publish these books exposing the UN in the 60s, and it had limited, you know, limited uh, uh, circulation. Now you can get this on internet. You have millions of people reading this stuff, reading it from their own. And we're not making this up. It's right there in their own documents. Just read the stuff yeah. and see what they mean, what they say. And and, and I, I mean, people would would marginalize the John Birch Society. Uh, especially back in the day. Well, the reason why they had to do that is they saw the potential appeal we had, and they didn't like what we had. And it wasn't that we were anti-communist. There are mm-hmm. lots of organizations that were anti-communist, uh, in quotation marks. What was different about the Birch Society is that we weren't pointing at Moscow or Havana. We were pointing at New York City and Washington as the basis of where this was happening. And we mm-hmm. pointed out that uh, we were funding the communist empire giving it aid and trade and legitimacy. While we were fighting it in Vietnam, we were giving it support in East, Eastern Europe. 
uh, building bridges and all these other programs. I remember uh, I was at an air, uh, aviation museum in uh, Connecticut a few years ago. I picked up the little newsletter from um, um, the Sikorsky business, the Sikorsky okay. um, helicopter. Yeah, but uh, it's a uh, oh, it's a they make the elevators, they make the helicopters, whatever. It's uh, it'll come to me. Okay. It was their um, it was a little newsletter and Sikorsky. I was the son or grandson of the famous, uh, must be the grandson of the famous, uh, uh, the, the white Russian uh, right. expatriate who was quite a, I understand, a really good man. I had some people who knew him. And he's bragging about in the 60s, we were in Eastern Europe trying to find business for our technology. And I'm saying, here we are, here he is corroborating what we have been saying all these years. I wrote him a letter and I said, uh, how many, how many people in Vietnam were killed? by the technology you sold to people in Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. He never responded to me. So we were telling people for years that well, the, the communist dynamic was built largely in the United States, and people had trouble with that. But now it's a little more obvious mm -hmm. uh, when you can actually put out these uh, these documents that are Lincoln Bloomfields, the world effectively controlled by the UN, uh, back in 1663, saying us that we don't want the dynamic. To, we want to communism to be successful. We have to scare people into this idea of world government. Now... They're turning it around. Now they're using the environment as a means to build this world government. Well, and, and this is really uh, kind of an entree into the conversation about Agenda 21. This is tied into the green movement. That's right. And, and you know, it's, it's all well and good. And I'm not an environmentalist per se, but I, I certainly want clean air and clean water and all the good things that go along with, uh, with a, a healthy environment. But there is an agenda that goes... Beyond, well, beyond the environment, some people might even say in contradiction to a, to a healthy environment, that, that is this, this green agenda under which uh, Agenda 21 falls. Explain what, what you know the John Birch Society's position is on this and, and what you'll be talking about uh, tonight. Well, uh, I give, what a, well, first off, what is Agenda 21? Agenda 21 is a thousand-plus page document that was drawn up in uh, 19, 1990, but came out of the Rio conference, the Rio de Janeiro UN conference on the, the on, on the environment from 1992, uh, which was sort of a landmark event, right. and it certainly was well publicized. And right, 18, the United 000, States was participating in this. Yeah, uh, Al Gore was there, uh, Senator Gore, John Kerry. It was about 18,000 bureaucrats from around the world. Some elected, some not, and out of that came a number of things: the Biodiversity Treaty and. Uh, you also had this soft law called Agenda 21, mm -hmm. and uh, about 146 nations signed on to this, including ours. George H.W. Bush was a man. He was not at the conference. He was on a boat offshore, and they plopped it, this 1,000-page document, which he probably didn't even read, uh, how to promote this Agenda 21 mm -hmm. all in the United States, and he signed on, signed off to it, and every branch of the federal government promotes Agenda 21. You may never even see the word Agenda 21 in any official document, but there, you go to the post office, you can see evidences of that. HUD, you can see evidences of that. They're giving grants to build these green buildings all over the country, and you better be this certain way or you're not going to get the money. Now, now uh, how, uh, you know, if this may be amplifying it, I mean, uh, there is this, there's the uh, environmental agenda. Part of that is a climate change agenda which maybe gets more publicity and there's more, I well, guess, open debate about climate change well, the in general. Well, global warming is one of the foundations right. of Agenda 21. Right. They've convinced a lot of people that because of man-made carbon, man-made carbon dioxide, man-made uh, pollutants into the air. Well, not a part of the natural cycle that the right. Earth goes through where, exactly, it, where it warms exactly right. and it cools and it warms Now, and I've cools. attended climate change conferences as a journalist for the New American. I just put on a different hat and a there badge, and I went down to, uh, over to New York City uh, two years in a row. This climate change conference was being hosted by a free market organization, the Heartland Institute out of Chicago. And they had open invitations to bring Al Gore, all these other scientists that are buying into this, Paul Ehrlich, and I, but none of them show up. Who showed up though were scientists in every conceivable discipline dealing with global warming, from polar bear scientists to weatherman, the co-founder, the founder of the Weather Channel, meteorologist, some economists, and 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 the president of the European Union was there. By the way, Al Gore will not be in the same room with him because right, he's a well, he no longer he's no longer the president, but he had been. Mm -hmm. uh, Vekov, uh, anyway, uh, and they uh, say that there is no evidence to support any. In fact, they believe we're heading to a, a cooling. And they say there's a natural cycle. When we had a warming, we had a warming period. 
uh, what they call the medieval warming period, before there was any kind of uh, major factories and cars burning gasoline. Uh, warming period, uh, a little the, ice, a little age, ice and age, and there's, and there's and just and different and cycles yeah, that right. the, the climate goes but through. But it's, it's this, this misinformation is almost institutionalized. And if you go to... As, as Green has been institutionalized. Right. You go to any website, you go to what, like the city of Boston, the city of Philadelphia, global warming, global warming, carbon carbon footprint, carbon footprint. Right. Well, the only kind of people that don't have a carbon footprint are those that are dead. Let's put it that way. There you go. Okay, so... We can't blame them. And you know what? There was a uh, two scientists, a father and son team, uh, Sherwood Idzo and his father uh, in Arizona. They did a carbon, di- a carbon dioxide enhanced environment. Mm-hmm. And what they discovered was that plants do very well. They grow astronomically larger, and, and they encourage that you need to have more carbon dioxide. It's just a small fraction of the of the, uh, of the the greenhouse gases. Right. Water vapor is the biggest one. And that's another evil thing that we have to address, too. Water vapors, right? So, uh, so they get a lot of people scared, and Agenda 21 is pushed in the classrooms of America, big time. Mm-hmm. Every, from kindergarten on, they're going to push this, and it's part of, uh, and, um, if people don't think this was this has been going on, I, I'm 50 years old. Well, I got you beat by a few years. I, I, I remember being in elementary school, and there was the beginning of what was an environmental movement at the time. That's right. Where they, where they said that you know the the uh, resources like coal and, and oil would be all used up by the mid 1990s. Obviously, and they were off a little bit. Finding more, and there's more gas. There's more uh, gas in this country. You guys right. are sitting on tons of it right here in Pennsylvania, right? And that, you know, it's interesting. The technology, in 1900, our nation was deforested quite, quite like 90%. Most of the Northeast was deforested, right? But because of fossil fuels, coal and oil that was being, coming online, being used, especially oil, we didn't used to have use, use as much wood. And because of metals and other things, we didn't use as much wood in building. We didn't use much wood in making everything. Mm-hmm. So the forest grew back, interestingly enough. And, um, in New Hampshire, for example, if you looked at a picture of Mount Monadnock from uh, the downtown Jaffrey, a little village of Jaffrey, you would see the top because there weren't any trees. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't do that anymore. All the trees are back. Mm-hmm. They're all grown back. Mm-hmm. And they don't tell you that there are more forests in the northeast than there were 100 years ago because they'll say, look at this housing track. Look at this. Isn't this terrible? There's too many humans. Right. Our population actually has been, since 73, had been decreasing. It's only offset by a million people coming here legally and millions more coming in there illegally. So our population uh, is, and especially Western Europe, Western Europe has a minus population, and you can't sustain a culture or a country with a decreasing birth rate. And, it can't happen. And it's not to say that we are not capable of doing damage to the environment. Clearly we of are, course. And, and, well, and we need regulations along those lines. But But it's got to be kind of, to me, a transparent sort of debate that you have when, when you're debating something that you call green, well, what is the agenda behind it? I mean, if it's really an environmental concern and there's damage being done and there's something you can do in response, well, we, we're obligated to do that. You right. want the best environment you've got. But if there is another agenda below it, what is that agenda? We'll talk about Agenda 21. Got to take a break. Comment, please, by Univest. Hal Sherliff is with us. He is with the John Birch Society, now focused on Agenda 21. And Tom Ensign tonight will give you details as to where you can go this evening to hear Hal's presentation. We'll, we'll tease it a little bit. We won't give it all away, but we'll tease it a little bit as we return on Comment Please by Univest in a moment. Remember when you learned to ride a two-wheeler? Your first jump off the high dive? Or riding the big roller coaster? Moments when the encouragement from someone who understood your fears made all the difference. So wouldn't it be nice in these economic times to have a banking partner there to help you with the next big steps in your financial life? Well, now you can. Choose Univest Bank and Trust Co. Our commitment to serving our customers has never been stronger, and we're here to help you. Let's get through this together. Believe in local. Choose Univest. College Ice Hockey takes center stage outdoors at the bank, and you can hear it live on AM 1440. Wednesday night, January 4th, the Newman University Knights face off against Penn State University in an ice hockey game from Philadelphia's ballpark. 
Join us for all the action live on AM 1440 and on the web, WNPV1440.com, beginning at 745, Wednesday night, January 4th. Brought to you by Newman University, Catholic education in the Franciscan tradition. Attention advertisers. The Courier News Weekly provides you with valuable advertising to over 60,000 homes in five zones throughout the area. But did you know they can also provide you with flyers printed and delivered at low cost? Flyers, menus, postcards, and more. The Courier News Weekly has affordable graphic design service available and can design and print vivid four-color mail cards for your direct mail campaign. 267-663-6300 for the Courier News Weekly. Ever thought about starting your own blog? Don't even know what a blog is, but curious to find out? The Times-Herald can help. Do you have a passion for peanuts? Do you know more about Ben Franklin than any one person should? Do you still talk about your baseball card collection like you did when you were 12? You might be a blogger. The Times-Herald Community Media Lab offers bloggers and potential bloggers a helping hand. To take part in the next Community Media Lab, email the Times-Herald editor, Stan Husky, at s-h-u-s-k-e-y at timesherald.com. Who knows? You might be a blogger. Or you could be a viewer. The Times-Herald is bringing back Behind the Headlines, a weekly web broadcast of their popular TV show. There are two shows running each week, Politically Direct with Times-Herald editor Stan Husky and Point of View with Times-Herald managing editor Gordon Glantz. To become a sponsor of either show, contact Jennifer Hoffman at jdhoffman at journalregister.com or call her at 610-272-2500, extension 261. Small business owners like me can be seen online. Now I know what it takes to turn my business around. It was definitely worth taking time out of my busy day. Are you ready to make your local business succeed? Attend a free online marketing seminar with Yellow Book 360. Go to YBSeminars.com. You get the do's and don'ts of pay-per-click advertising. Now it's time to sit back and let the leads roll in. Register today at YBSeminars.com. That's YBSeminars.com. WNPV Lansdale. AM 1440, it's Comment Please by Univest uh, on the program today. Uh, Hal Sherliff is with the uh, uh, group, the John Birch Society, which, again, a lot of people associate with the uh, the issue of communism, but there's a hidden agenda that they're talking about, and Hal in particular tonight at the Tominson Firehouse, a 7 o'clock start time, I understand. Yeah, 7 o'clock. There, there's a $10 admission uh, to get in. But you're going to detail I will, yes. Agenda 21. Give me the broad strokes here of, of Agenda 21. To me, it seems more of a, a land thing, isn't it? Then, oh, you know, you think of emissions as air right. quality and it's that kind of thing. a lot more than that. They, they want to radically change life. Let me give you a direct quote mm-hmm. from, uh, I actually, I, I have the, I have a lot of the material, but people say, oh, we don't believe what you're saying. Well, here, here it is right from the so-called horse's mouth. Mm-hmm. There was a book that came out that, the Agenda 21 document was um, uh, over a thousand pages. Right. So most people aren't going to sit there and uh, read a thousand page document. So they came out Agenda 21, uh, the Earth Summit strategy to save our planet, and they write that in the foreword, uh, edited by David Sittarts, Daniel Sittarts. He said, "Well, we're doomed, folks. The Earth's going to be destroyed unless you folks do what we tell you." In mm-hmm. so many words. Mm-hmm. And he's this. Effective execution of Agenda 21 will require a profound reorientation of all human society, unlike anything the world has ever experienced. A major shift in the priorities of both governments and individuals in an unprecedented redeployment of human and financial resources. This shift will demand that a concern for the environmental consequences of every human action be integrated into individual and collective decision-making at every level. Mm -hmm. They talk about the United Nations, the World Bank. You know, it's funny because now this is getting a lot of attention the last year and a half. I mean, I've never seen this response that way. I, I have to actually turn down en- uh, engagements because I'm already booked. I have to reschedule it. It's, it's very, people are waking up to this and the, the media pundits who are poo-pooing this will say, there's no such thing. Oh, this is crazy. You don't see the word Agenda 21 anywhere. I say, well, there's a reason for that. <laughs> because one of the proponents of Agenda 21. A hard thing to market. It's a hard thing to market. Right, That's right. right, right. Uh, his name is J. Gary Lawrence. He addressed a group of people in 96. Now, Lawrence was an advisor to Bill Clinton on sustainability. Mm-hmm. And he said basically that the, the conspiracy folks, you know, the people worried about one world government will, 
will work. They'll, they'll, they'll really, they'll expose elected officials trying to implement this. So let's call it something different. Mm-hmm. Let's call it sustainable development, smart growth, green this or green that. In other words, we need to deceive and lie to people. So you see these media, smarmy media types, uh, oh, there's no such thing as a 21. And I'll say, well, you won't see that term. You actually go to these websites and you won't even find, you, you do a little engine search on the website, you won't see the Agenda 20, but you'll see sustainable development, development smart growth. Uh, when I was in New Jersey, um, there was a person there that said, uh, this isn't happening in New Jersey. Is it, it doesn't happen. Uh, sustainable New Jersey, New Jersey, has nothing to do with the U.N., well, that's what's great about the Internet. I found a uh, PowerPoint presentation put out by Sustainable New Jersey. The second slide says that one of the goals of Sustainable New Jersey is to connect the U.N. to local communities. Well, what could be more open than that? Mm-hmm. And at my presentation tonight, I talk a little bit about the background of the U.N. People should be very uncomfortable about connecting with the U.N., period. And, and, and your argument is that the U.N., is after control. And, well, let me qualify this. It isn't the third world dictators at the UN that we have to worry about. Mm-hmm. It's the first world dictators in this country with the pinstripe suits and the degrees from Ivy League colleges. They're the ones that are implementing it. Mm-hmm. When George H.W. Bush addressed a joint session of Congress announcing uh, the, the war in Iraq, the undeclared war, he said, out of this will come a new world order. And a UN is envisioned by its founders. He never said who its founders were and what exactly what they envisioned. Well, it's not a pretty picture, and I will paint that uh, tonight. When you, it it wasn't that. Thomas Jefferson and uh, Ben no, Franklin. it was and, not. And, and let me say this, too. Founding uh, As far as government control in the environment, where nations that have total control, where there's no private property, you have environmental devastation. Mm-hmm. Like the, Soviet, the old Soviet Union, Cuba, and China, communist China, you don't see EPA agents running around telling people you got to shut this down because it's government controlled, uh, so they can get away with it. And, and you say that some of this is, again, Agenda 21 is not something you will find, but you'll find smart growth initiatives, regional visioning projects. Visioning is a big thing. They will come in, these, these, uh, when a, when a, when a, a city or a town or a county, they'll hire these, uh, facilitators to come in, they bring in what they call stakeholders. Mm-hmm. A stakeholder could be a guy like you, someone sure. who's known in the community, right. the owner of a business, a, a town selectman. I'd like to believe I'm a stakeholder. <laughs> a good thing. Sure. And you have these visioning sessions. What do you see your county in the next 50 years? Right. And they come up with all these nice things, but there's already predetermined results. Mm-hmm. And they walk out of there, this is what the people want, and they're gonna get it. Mm-hmm. And uh, people don't. And when I talk about ICLE, this this uh, international organization that towns and cities belong to, ICLE, ICLE, International okay. Council on Local Environmental Initiative. Mm-hmm. It's an unconstitutional UN entity, and I, I should say it's not so much a UN. It's like a. It's almost like it's it was created at a UN conference, and then it's just like a like a separate entity. But it's a government to government organization. Now our constitution says that. Article 1, Section 10, that states cannot confederate. Basically, Pennsylvania cannot join the European Union because you're a part of the United States. There's things you can't do. You can't declare war. Uh, you can't mint your own uh, your own money, what have you. Can't. But they try and enlist individual towns so and they, cities. Yeah, so if a state can't be confederate, neither can a town or a city or a county. So the town, uh, a township or a town cannot become part of an international organization. Mm-hmm. And they have been. There's over 600 in the United States. You have about 15, and not as many in Pennsylvania, but you don't have to be a formal member. You can get their software. You can implement what their proposals. And some of it may be, I mean, quite innocently, somebody well, could fall in a municipal official sure. say, well, listen, I, who don't want to be on the green bandwagon? You know, Let me and, get and on the I green say, bandwagon. I'll say tonight, there's nothing wrong with recycling, especially if it's market-driven. Right. For example, yes, you buy a product, you, would you buy the product, you pay for the wrapper. If you can take that wrapper and put it back into circulation and, and, and be feasible, let's do it. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to tell me you're going to pull up a truck, you're going to clean that bottle out with a gallon of water, and then you're going to take that truck and you're going to bring it to a plant, that's a lot of energy that goes in there. Are you really getting anything out of it? Maybe not, but we feel awfully good about ourselves. It's a big footprint. Uh, but I've know. actually I've been to a the trash museum in Hartford, Connecticut, and I spoke to. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a great. There's place. such a thing as the yeah. trash museum. Well, it's a, it shows you how they recycle. Okay. And they said initially when we started, we were losing money. It's a nonprofit corporation, and he said we actually we contract with the city of uh, different cities, pick up the trash, we sell it to the power plants, mm-hmm. we recycle the plastic for this for that. 
it's a it's a feasible entity and it's good. But you told me that you're going to pay me if I was to put my stuff on the front and you're going to pay me for the recycle. You don't I tell you what, you don't have to you don't have to give me a commercial tell me I have to go green. I'm going to be as green as possible. But I, I was just uh, the point I was making to earlier that municipal officials could sign on to sustainable growth to, to whatever. It, yes, exactly. Or without understanding now, the, what's all, the, all the tentacles that sustainable are sustainable development. There's a, there's the official term they came out with 1987, the, the uh, Brutland Commission came out with sustainable development, and they said meeting the needs of this present generation, not the wants, but the needs, there's a difference, right, mm-hmm. without infringing on the needs of the future generation. Now, that sounds pretty good, but like any legal term, what does that mean? You know, don't give me the flowery, give me what is it, what is, well, if you ask Maurice Strong, who was the Secretary General of the Rio Conference in 92, uh, he said the American middle class is the most biggest threat to the world. We're not sustainable. And why aren't we sustainable? Single family homes, private businesses, automobiles, sometimes two, even three, some families, right? Uh, swimming pools in the backyard. We have a high meat intake and all these other things. We're not sustainable, folks. Essentially our lifestyle. Right. We are a consumptive, you know, society. Right. It's, it's we consume. Now, That's what do we do? One of, growing up in Boston, uh, my, you know, we, we, we weren't destitute but we were we were poor right. i didn't know we were poor until i you know 20 years later geez we, we <laughs> didn't have a tv for our first few years you know growing up and we didn't have a car we had to go public transportation we had no choice my mother used to put clothes on a clothesline a solar dryer right <laughs> because we couldn't afford one but uh, you know and we and I, you know my dad was a depression era guy and you know we clo- and uh, we learned a lot about you know how do you how to be a frugal yankee right to my father who was a frugal yankee and to me, that's good stewardship. See, there's a concept of stewardship that we use the resources that God gave us wisely. Mm-hmm. We don't we don't purposely destroy property. Uh, we use good management practices. And yes, that happened over the years. You know, clear cutting and in some cases, clear cutting is a good thing. But that's another topic that I let an for- expert on the forest forest <laughs> can get into that, right? Uh, like Dr. Michael Kaufman, he's somebody you should have on at some point. Um, so wise use. Good stewardship and private property are the best way to preserve the environment. Mm-hmm. See, I tell a, a story where I was walking in my neighborhood not too long ago. A guy was dumping mortar oil into the sewer, which is watches out to Boston Harbor. He had a swimming pool in his backyard. I said, I was a little upset with him. Mm-hmm. See, I love the environment. I'm, I'm always picking up trash. I think we should plant trees. Sure. Everybody should have a nice garden. And we should be as independent as possible. We should be able to have our own little gardens uh, have it some livestock, maybe some chickens, and and even if you have a windmill, you know it's expensive. Mm-hmm. And if you can get off the grid, God bless you, get off that grid, you know. <laughs> but windmill technology and solar panels aren't going to be enough to create energy for the dynamic growing economy. And that's just it. They don't want a dynamic growing economy. They want an economy that's shrinking, mm-hmm. and and a population that's shrinking. And you have they see there's always consequences to actions, right? And in in in, uh, in uh, so you have to ask yourself. If you have this, this strict population control, what are the results? Well, we see what's happening in China, don't we? They have a one-child policy, right? And the Chinese people say, well, you know what? We're going to have a son because we can get more. To, mm-hmm. They can help us more than a female, right? That may not be true in this country, but that's, the, that's what they believe there. So they have a lot of males and not many females. Social consequences. And they're going to have a declining birth rate. They're going to have an older population, too. They're going to have the same problems. So... Um, when man tries to do things that are beyond his scope, there's always going to be problems. And, and uh, of course, this is Agenda 21. It's part of the, uh, I, I mean, the, the whole green thing is, it, it, it's almost as though you're playing catch-up, though, because in terms of popular culture, uh, there's a bandwagon, and, and green is it. And you're either on the bandwagon well, or you're not. I mean, <coughs> you, get, you get NBC, one of the major networks in the country, they, they go green for a week, and then all their channels are green. Right. So I mean, it's. I it think seems sometimes to me that they there's overplay their hand. You know, sometimes like all these. I remember in the '70s, all these cigarette commercials: quit smoking, quit smoking. Well, more people were smoking. You know, they got tired of this. So I think they're overplaying their hand, and it's actually helping our cause because it's easier to see. Mm-hmm. Fifteen to twenty years ago, show a map, the Wildlands map. They look at us like you guys are nuts. Well, okay, we may be crazy, but we're not stupid. Uh, but but now they can see it, and they can see evidence of this wherever they go, mm-hmm. and it's a lot easier. And again, I'm not suggesting that everybody who has a sign, I'm going green, is necessarily a, a UN plotter, you know, taking over the world. That's what sure. the, 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 they're trying to, you know, trying to project us as this crazy and nonsensical. But we're not just telling them about bad news. We want to be able to say, hey, there's something you can do. 
and I give evidence, examples of what's happening around the country. It's very, very encouraging mm-hmm. that for the first time, people are visiting their town halls other than to pay a tax, right? And getting to know that selectman or that... Um, We've got supervisors here and, and they know uh, township they, commissioners right. and borough councilmen. That Some of them of are that. actually running for office. We were in Maryland, uh, actually... Well, Delaware, Maryland border mm-hmm. last night, and there was a state uh, state senator there who's mm-hmm. been fighting this in Maryland. Two of their counties got rid of Agenda 21 this last uh, this past uh, early January and February. Right. In Maine, South uh, Central Coastal Maine, they had uh, they had they called um, they called it not pro- Project Project One. What was it called? Gateway One. Okay. Not Agenda 21, but Gateway One, right? And it was nothing more than Agenda 21 being implemented. Coastal, they're going to re- rezone roads and rezone the property and all this. And some of our members, along with other patriot type groups, got to the governor, and the governor listened. See, some governors in some states are accessible. Some of them are celebrities you don't even see. But that's a parade right. or something like that. You got that right. And um, I, am I talking about your governor? And uh, anyway, the next less, day, less the one we have now, and more the one we used to have in Ed Randell. But anyway, the next day he holds a press conference. He defunded. Gateway One. Mm-hmm. Smart meters is another thing that uh, you hear a lot about. about uh, smart meters put, in, put into a home. It's basically a listening device, and there have been cases where warrants have been issued because of the readings of a smart meter. Mm-hmm. We think it might have an unlicensed business there, you see. So uh, in Maine, a, a couple fought it, and they won their case. So now they have the right to refuse a smart meter. Um, the towns all over the country are pulling out of uh, ICLEI, ICLEI, even Carver, Massachusetts, which is a cranberry community there in southeastern Massachusetts. Uh, you have um, a couple of counties in Virginia, uh, Edmond, Oklahoma. There's actually property rights caucuses being pop- popping up in par- parts of the in-, in legislators around the country. And, and a lot of this is property rights, individual you know property rights. The, our founders of our nation looked at private property as one of the essential elements of freedom. And I think in some constitutions you have the, the right to life, liberty, and property. And not only that, but to protect the property, to defend your property. Mm-hmm. Because without private property, you don't have any jobs. You don't have any dynamic creation of uh, of uh, all the things that we have that we take granted for. Everybody's for got granted. a website. Hal, what's your website? Yeah, uh, it's jbs.org. Mm-hmm. And we encourage you to go onto the website, and you'll see uh, where we'll say issues. Click on issues. It will go down to choose freedom, stop agenda 21. you get some good downloads there you can use, some good resources, and also... You can leave information, contact us. And uh, so we encourage you to contact us. Uh, come out If you can't come out tonight, we can give you information on the subject and, uh, you know, get busy trying to uh, yeah. reverse things here. And, and if this is something that concerns you, the one of the good things about it is because there's, you know, if, if you believe what, what uh, Hal's been talking about here, a, an agenda to implement this stuff locally, very often, the best response you get is locally if you're trying to, right. to, to, right. to defend something. And the, the battle isn't in Congress so much, and it's not even in the state house. It's in your town or your county or your township. Yeah. That's where the battle is. And so that's why people are connecting. And like I said earlier, since June, early June, I've given about 30 presentations around the region, and I've got the next three months pretty fill, filled up with these presentations. And I'm, what's, what's great is that I, I go to out to, to a certain place, and I get more information about. I'm, I'm learning thing, new things all the time as well, and sort of changing the presentation as I get more information and what have you. Well, Hal, I, I appreciate the time. Well, thank you for having uh, me. The people that have come out tonight, I think, are going to, uh, to be interested and engaged. And it's a seven o'clock start time. The Tomanson Firehouse on Bustard Road in Tomanson Township. Seven o'clock start time. There is a, a ten dollar fee. Ten dollar fee. And uh, I, I guess is there a, is there a multimedia presentation? Is it you? Talking with a, a question and I answer. I give a PowerPoint, and uh, we'll, we'll, after the program is, a, you know, we'll have, and there'll be a lot of material information that you can pick up as well. All right, real good. Hal, I appreciate the time. Thank you for coming, uh, giving me, let me on. Thank yeah. you for. Now, Hal sometimes even hosts a radio program. Oh, back I, in I have filled in here and there over the years. Yeah. They're, well, yeah. they think your accent isn't a funny accent. No, <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> what accent? <laughs> Hal, thanks for stopping. Thank by. you. Appreciate it. We're going to be back. I'll do some open phones. Come in, please, my invest. On this Wednesday, we'll continue in a moment. That's tough.